then it's time for the other than kitty type films. And it has really been exciting ever since then. So I, I'll give out the phone number. Oh, yeah, of course, one-third of the Pinellas lines are out for the second day. General Van Ortner has told us they will be over here sometime in April to uh, give us an estimate on what that might cost. And then General Van Ortner has also just been cutting people off left and right, both on the air and off the air. So it has been an exciting afternoon right here at the radio station. And we're talking to our friends and neighbors in the Bay Area about the things that are important to them. Did, I, did, I, did, did it really ever dawn on you that you don't know what's important to you? You know, those of you who listen to talk radio, you don't really know what is important to you until the guy on the air tells you what's important to you. But if it's a day where he says, hey, whatever is important to you, bring it here, it's always weird stuff. Yes. I listen to you when I can, and when I'm working, I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ad I enjoy your voice very much. Mm -hmm. uh, you remind me of my sister-in-law. She had a very, I very sweet voice. you of your sister-in-law. Her sweet voice was very sweet. Maybe you're a drug dealer out there. You disagree with Irene, and you'd like to put your two cents worth in. Um, in order to make it fair, <laughs> they make it. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> they make it complicated. I tell you, General Gardner just did it to us again. Cleared the board. Let me give the telephone numbers. Actually, let me introduce a new topic here. Taste great or less filling? Huh? Which one is it? I'll tell you what. For the gang in Carrollwood, we'll make it frozen yogurt. Tastes great or less filling. And for the crowd in Pinellas County, we'll make it the beer. Nice to see what the next brave soul who tries to get through on the phone lines will bring up as a topic of conversation. I'll bet you two are sitting back there at home or perhaps at the office, maybe even down there at the shop, possibly even cruising through the area in your car, waiting to see what the next great call will bring. I tell you, it's enough to give a person goosebumps and to, to make your heart palpitate or whatever it is that a heart does. Hey, Oh, boy. Chuck in Oldsmar. Hi there, Chuck. You're on the air at WFLA. Okay. I, I just want to make one point clear about mm -hmm. Oldsmar Bridge. It's Oldsmar not, Bridge. Ah, yes. Great It's not topic. very high at all. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's party central, you know, of the universe. I mm -hmm. just love this town. Um, it's not... Wait, it's, wait, wait a second, Chuck. You go to the Oldsmar Bridge to party? Oh, yeah, everybody does. They go on uh, railroad tracks and get fined. It's all, it's fun. Go out on the railroad tracks and get fined. Yeah, they fine you for standing on the railroad tracks because no, no trains come over any time. I've got to get out. I've got to get out. Yes, uh-huh. But the bridge is only high enough to go over the traffic that's on Philippi Parkway. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd make that clear. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, Chuck. Hey, I said I told you the next call would be enough to make you do whatever. Oh, okay, line five already dropped off. Just, just bam. As soon as you put it on hold, it just disappeared. Oh, this is going to be great. I just love it. It's an hour and a half of this to go. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe a pound on the damn thing, it'll work. You know what I mean? Okay, it doesn't seem to help very much. I haven't had this much fun since, so. Oh, gosh, when was it? Uh... I think it was back in first grade on Halloween when Miss Ray, she was the first grade teacher. I don't think I've had so much fun since Miss Ray guessed me first when we came back after lunch with our little costumes on and Miss Ray was going to guess everybody in the room, you know, who they were. And I had this little tiger suit, you know, complete covered me from head to toe with a, a little mask on and the whole thing. And bam, she got me first and... Hardly got anybody else in the class. She missed on all the others. Took me years to figure out how Miss Ray did that. Took me years. If I ever get my hands on a miserable slut, ruined my life. It's one of my great problems in life is that it goes back to that first grade party. Oh, that's not necessary. Just, you know, don't, don't take any chances with him. Just slap a name and a, a location up there. I couldn't care less. I'm serious. I couldn't care less. Steve and Peter. Third party. Give me a break, Hannibal. Rose in St. Petersburg. Hi, you're on the air at WFLA. Well, I was thinking in advance I was going to... Ah, oh, come on, Rose. You never thought in your life. Don't give me that stuff. Uh, don't be so mean to me. Why not? Because I was going to be nice to you. Oh. I was planning on calling and saying, oh, you're not a grumpy grouch today, are you? Mm. I guess you are, huh? Anyway, people are always saying, oh, I'm so afraid of Robertson, but... Reagan, you know, was so much against abortion, and Reagan wanted prayer in the classroom. So, you know, I think, what's the difference? Why are they so afraid of Robertson? Because we've had uh, a whole lot of similarities here with Reagan. Uh, that's not interesting to you, huh? What do you mean it's not interesting to me? What, what, what the hell is that supposed to mean, Rose? 
Well, that people are so afraid of Robinson, but Reagan was against abortion. And Reagan was trying to put prayer in the classroom. I don't so. think people are afraid of Pat Robertson because he's against abortion. Or for putting prayer in the classroom. I don't think people are afraid of Pat Robertson because he wants our kids to pray. Well, I think a lot of people do get mad about prayer in the classroom. Yes, they anyway. do, but that's not why people are afraid of Pat Robertson. Well, then why? Because the man's a lunatic yeah, and a liar. Yeah, oh, well, you're a bit of a dud in the creek, too. Mm -hmm. I thought she was going to be nice to me today. Jim in Tampa. Hi, Jim. You're on the air at WFLA. Yes, uh, Bob. Uh, two nights ago on the shortwave radio, mm -hmm. Radio France International said that pregnant Arab girls are being beaten until they miscarriage. Mm -hmm. That the Israeli soldiers are beating the pregnant girls until they miscarry. Yeah, I think I heard you the first time, yeah. And, uh... You know, have you done just one, just one monologue for these kids who are being beaten to death? I don't know anybody that's in favor of beating children to death. Do you, Jim? Well, well why don't you, why don't you... Jim, do I don't know, I don't know anybody that's in favor of beating children to death. Do you, Jim? How, how many, how many... Uh, Jim, I'm, I'm going to ask again. I don't know anybody that's in favor of having children beaten to death. Do you? If you don't speak out against it, you are, do you, you are Jim? tacitly approving, Oh, I beg Bob. your pardon. I've spoken out against it every time I've been asked about it, Jim. I've never heard a single monologue. I don't I'm... give a damn what you have heard or what you haven't heard. Every time I've been inquired about it, I have spoken out against Could, it, Jim. Can There's you not a damn thing that I can do about it. This program is for entertainment purposes, Jim. Why don't you and do I, Why don't you, huh? May I say why something? Don't you, why don't, send in a tape and a resume, Jim. Get your own damn show, and then you Bob. can spout all of your anti-Jewish... Then you can spout all of your damned anti-Jewish rhetoric day and night. But until you can get your own show, Jim, don't ever call mine again. Is that real clear, Jim? Let me spell it out for you, because I know you're a little thick. Don't ever call mine again. How dare you, you subhuman pig? You subhuman pig, how dare you imply that I sanction such activity? Take your business someplace else, Jim. I don't need it here. One thing. Uh, did you finish them Howard Stern tapes by any chance? Did I finish the Howard Stern tapes by any chance? Yeah, yes, did I did. Did you finish them? Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, your message is on my desk. I was planning on calling you at 4 o'clock because, Joe, I've got a story that you're not going to believe. Uh-oh. They were stolen off my desk last Monday. Are you serious? I'm very serious, and I'm trying to find out if I can possibly get them back because I feel super bad. Well, uh, well, you know, no, you know, no big deal, but let me know what happens. Um, I hope you're fine. Of course, there, there was really an incredible thing, too. I mean, nobody knows what the hell we're talking about, but that's all right. It's a full moon day. I haven't, or a new moon day. I haven't understood hardly anybody that's called up today, so I'm sure the rest of the audience hasn't. Yeah. But the really bizarre thing is, is you left your card in one of those uh, boxes. Uh huh. The one that has your card in it, they took the tape out of the box and left the box behind. All of the other tapes, they took tape and box too. You did get an opportunity to listen to them, though. Yes, right? I did. Yeah. Did you enjoy and, them? Oh, immensely. And I, I know that you went to a lot of trouble to do it. And well, I, you know, I just. I've been well, sitting, you know, sitting my desk I put, my, I put my foot in my mouth before I left and told you I'd do it, and I would have felt like I could have never called the show again. Cause, well, you know, well, you know hey, remember people. hey, I've been sitting at my desk now for two days, trembling, trying to figure out how in the hell am I going to tell this man that he went to all this trouble and expense, and I, I lost the tapes because somebody ripped them off. Yeah. Well, maybe, they'll, maybe then somebody will listen to them and they'll turn back up. I hope so. Well, were so. they out on the front desk? I mean, where no, did no, the no, no, is? No, my desk in my office. Oh, so it's a uh, crime within. Ah, yes. Okay. Thanks again, uh, Bob. Sure appreciate everything. Thank you, Joe. All right, Bob. I'll be in touch. I okay. promise. Okay. Bob, don't you? Of course you do. Sue in St. Petersburg. Hi, Sue. You're on the air at WFLA. Uh, hello. I think that you were unfair to Jim, calling him anti-Jewish. Mm -hmm. You Jewish pig. Mm -hmm. Is that about it, Sue? No. Oh, okay. You want to discuss the poor Palestinians? And those monsters that are massacring. This is not new. They've been whoa, doing whoa, it for whoa, 20 Sue, years. Sue, 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 what do, you, what do you mean discuss? You said you would discuss it if people called about it. Not so, not a, it's not you. exactly what I said, Sue, but I would be delighted to discuss the matter with you. You see, I have come out on a number of occasions, including today, never. and denounced... You Jewish pig, never! Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, Sue, that including today, in, in just the time that that subhuman pig, like yourself, called 
Uh, I, I have repeatedly denounced the behavior on the part of the Israelis toward the Palestinians in the occupied lands. And it then is you call despicable. people. Then you call people anti-Jewish. Well, well, he happens to be just like you. What do you want us to do? Applaud those massacres? No, Sue. I, I never suggested any such thing. See, in this one particular instance, you are right. In this one particular instance, but you have. You know, what, what, I've had talk radio in this market for 10 years. For 10 years, you've been an anti-Semite, so long before they started burying Arab kids alive in the occupied homelands. You are a Jew. No, I'm not, Sue. Actually, I was born and raised a Catholic. Then why do you defend the murdering rampages they've been doing for 20 well, Sue, years Sue, on Sue, those Sue, policies? Uh, Sue, uh, Sue, again, I'm going to point out to you that I don't defend it. As a matter of fact, I denounce it. Then why don't you talk about it? I do, Sue, whenever I'm asked about it. How come I'm not on the radio? How come only your voice is on the radio? You are on the radio, Sue. I dare you to have a monologue on the mass, on those bastard murderers. Well, Sue, as I pointed out to the last caller, and as I'll point out to you, what I do on this program are raise issues in which there are two sides, and I raise issues for people to discuss. And I, I don't frankly know anybody that's in favor of burying young boys alive. You know the Jews don't belong over there. I, be, I, no I, beg you, I, I beg your pardon, you Sue. I, I beg your pardon, Sue. Um, don't put words or thoughts into my mouth. You see, Sue, I didn't create Israel. Frankly, nor did the Jews. This modern state of Israel was created by people like you to get them the hell out of Israel and stick them in the desert it's so that they wouldn't Hitler be under didn't your nose. Them off. It's too bad Hitler didn't get them. See, I see, see, there we go, Sue. I knew if we let you on long enough, it would come out. See, I, I, I am quite justified, Sue, when I call you an anti-Semite. I'm also quite justified, Sue, when I call you a subhuman pig. The lowest of subhuman pigs. You're a disgusting woman. Without friends, without family, without anything but your hatred. Please call the show again, Sue, real soon. By the way, Sue isn't her name. She uses that because she thinks we'll keep her off the air. Nothing could be further from the truth. In the piano. No, I think it was his entire presidency. There were a number of things that Harry did that people what? were very Name fond of. Name. Name, Name them? Name Well, I, I'd be delighted to, Gwen. Go ahead. Well, if you'll shut up for just a second, I will. I will, darling. I'll shut you up, Gwen. How's that, sweetheart, dearie, darling, dearest? People were very fond with the way that Harry Truman dealt with the minor strike. People were very fond with the way that Harry Truman dealt with a runaway crazed general who didn't like to take orders. People were very fond with the way that Harry Truman dealt with everything. And I don't believe it was the atomic bomb that made Harry Truman famous. Oh. Take my glasses off here, set them down on the counter. Did I ever tell you about my first day at school? I don't remember it. I'll see if I can't make something up. It would have been at uh, St. Joseph's Polish East Annex, which was in uh, East Camden. No, it wasn't in East Camden. I don't know why they call it East. It was right off of Ferry Avenue. I'm not sure of the intersection. It was a Spanish-style church uh, and building, which was rather peculiar because it was a you know, Polish uh, grammar school. My parents sent me, to. I went there for kindergarten. And uh, we did things that kids normally do in kindergarten, um, played, had cookies and milk, took naps, things of that nature. I remember uh, there, there was a girl in that, in that class. Her name was Andrea. I can't remember her last name. She had blonde hair. I, I liked Andrea very much. I liked her from the first day of school, and uh, I don't really have too many remembrances much beyond that. Oh. <sighs> Brian in Tampa. Hi there, Brian. You're on there at WFLA. Hey, Bob, I need some advice on uh, passing the Series 7 test. Mm-hmm. Uh, number, a uh, number of different people have uh, given me some advice of layering it. Uh, just take your time. I know you passed it yourself. No, I would recommend going to one of the Quickie Cram courses. They will give you about 25% of the answers. That's what I did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> hey, think nothing of it, Brian. Bye-bye. <sighs> uh, Scott in Clearwater. Uh, hi, hi there, Scott. You're on the air to WFLA. Yeah. 
about the sinful nature, a child being born with a sinful nature. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, it doesn't manifest probably till. No, no, it's not correct, Scott. It's what you believe, but that doesn't make it correct. Oh, that definitely makes it correct. Oh, because you believe it, I see. If it, if it wasn't true, Bob, why do we have prisons and police? It has nothing to do with sinful nature, Scott. Of course it does. No, it doesn't. Well, what did Jeremiah say about the heart, Bob? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't have my Bible in front of me. Scott, why don't you enlighten me? Okay, I kind of Jeremiah that you chapter would anyway. 17, mm -hmm. verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately Well, first wicked. of all, first of all, Scott, do you even know that some dude named Jeremiah wrote that? I sure do. No, you don't, Scott. That's what you've been told and you just accept it. In Genesis, mm -hmm. what did God say about people? Lots of things, Scott. Why don't you uh, tell me in particular what you had in mind? He said that man's heart is evil from his youth up. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And, and this is the same man that's made in God's image. That's right. I see. So I guess God's heart is sinful, too. No, but... Uh, whoa, 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 wait, whoa, whoa, wait a second, Scott. If, whoa, if man was made in God's image and has a sinful heart, then obviously God has well, a sinful heart, too. Where did he get that too. sinful heart? From he God. He disobeyed God in the garden. No, no, he got it from God, apparently, because God created man, right? No. And if man, if man was created with a sinful heart by God, then God, of course, created sin. Well, listen up, Bob. See, Adam, Get off my phone. Don't you tell me to listen up. I'm just in no mood for you people today. I really am not. 3.40 the time, and Gary McHenry is not there with a WFLA traffic report, but will be very soon. I, I feel confident of it. I feel very confident of it. Just momentarily, we will have the traffic report from Gary McHenry, who is also probably being as, as touchy today as the audience has been. And uh, we'll be having that traffic report from Gary McHenry. He'll probably be talking about things like, uh, well, he'll be, he'll, he'll be highlighting the traffic conditions on the major bridges. Probably not the Oldsmar Bridge, but maybe if we asked real nice, Gary would tell us just exactly how things are going on the Oldsmar Bridge. But we can count, we can really count on Gary telling us about the Howard Franklin, the Courtney Campbell... And the other one, whose name I can never... Ah, oh, the Gandhi. Yes, the Gandhi. I don't know why I can't remember the name of the Gandhi Bridge. I use it at least once a day. But then there isn't a sign up there that says Gandhi Bridge. It says Gandhi Boulevard, which is why I can never remember that it's the Gandhi Bridge. You'd think that, you'd think that a guy that could do four hours on a new moon day could remember the name of the Gandhi Bridge, wouldn't you? You certainly would think that. But um, what are you looking at me that way for in the control? People are looking at me very strangely in the control room. Holy cow, it's Gary McHenry's song. Gary McHenry with a WFLA traffic report, including conditions on the very popular Oldsmar Bridge. The Oldsmar Bridge, where you put your elbow out the window and the rearview mirror of the car going in the other direction takes it off. Well, how, how, how's traffic on the Oldsmar Bridge today, Gary? Oldsmar it's it's Bridge, been they... the most popular topic on my show this afternoon. <laughs> Since they started the construction on it, the traffic through there has been real heavy. So we'll, uh, we'll keep a special eye. In fact, I'm going to go up... Three cars there. on the Oldsmar Bridge, huh? Three cars. We're, we're going to uh, we're gonna do nothing all afternoon but circle the Oldsmar Bridge just for the folks on uh, the Bubble Lasseter Show. We have had... Uh, Quite a bang this afternoon because I know what's coming up on, in the way of the calls. Let's go to Bob in a car phone or on a car phone or something near a car phone somewhere in Hillsborough County. Where, where, where would you be, Bob? Bob, I'm right here at, at the Oldsmar Bridge. We got great excitement. The beer trucks made it through for the afternoon drink. Wait, wait, wait a second. Did you say the, the Oldsmar Bridge? Yes, well, you know, the site of the construction of... Uh, What, what, I, I hear a heavenly chorus in the back every every time that, that bridge is named. You mean the Oldsmar Bridge? Well, well it, you, it, know, you it, know, Bob, I'm trying to report that the Anheuser-Busch truck has made it through. The people are now setting up Bob's barricade so they can have a place to sit back and eat their... It's actually the whole... It's the only purpose of the Oldsmar Bridge, isn't it? To get beer in there. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, no. no, no. It's to get those gamblers. Those heathen gamblers. Gamblers? Uh, well, well, what kind right? of gambling is there in Oldsmar? Well, you, you know that great dog track. No, horse track they got out there. there. There's a horse track in Oldsmar? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's I don't track. even know where the hell Oldsmar is, if you want to know the truth. And I think I'd like to keep place. it that way. It is a scary place. But, but uh, you know, <clears throat> the workers just... Uh, oh, hey, there's Joe with the bill, beer belly coming up to the keg. Yeah, he's waving. He says hello, Bob. Mm, hello, Joe. Uh, he 
He's all excited now. He heard his name on the radio. They listen to you up here. Did you know that? Really? Uh-huh. They could, you, could, you, could you go around and change the, change the dials on the radios for me? Well, you might lose that 11 rating. Well, I don't think Oldsmar counts all that much. I thought they were like the 23rd uh, uh, medium market. Oldsmar is the 23rd market in the entire country, and I've been neglecting those good people up there and their fine bridge. They got a Hilton up here now. Uh, look, just 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 because you changed the sign out in front of the Ma and Pa Motel does not make it a real Hilton. I beg your pardon, Mr. Hilton came down and dedicated the place and everything to Aunt Judy upstairs. Harry Hilton is not the same Hilton that you're thinking of. But he's got that H in his name. Well, that well that may be, but Harry is a retired plumber from uh, Brookline, Massachusetts. Brookline. Yes, who, that wanted, who bought a. Bought a motel, the Ma and Pa Motel in Oldsmar, and just changed the name. My gosh, you mean? But hey, it was good enough for the people in Oldsmar. Well, hey, it's big news. But now, 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 why are we building the Oldsmar Bridge? There it is again. Strangest damn thing. I mean, we got all these tourists coming into town. We don't even have a real Hilton. Tourists going to Oldsmar. Yes, sir. Marvelous. You get, highway, you get off at Highway 50 up in, uh, uh, off of 75 north of Tampa. Highway 50? I've never heard of Highway 50. What kind of a road is Highway 50? Uh, a two-lane death trap. Uh-huh. You know, one, one that Tampa's famous for. Or, well, that's Pasco County. Right? Right, well, where does Highway 50 take you? Well, you can come down, and then you have to h- hop over onto 41, and then come through the back backwoods and past uh, the pig racing track. You cut across, you go by, by Tampa Downs, and you'll be right out there by the Oldsmar Bridge. You know, if we keep this up, we might have to get that Greek bishop down here to baptize it. I, I don't know, but I, th- I think we better not keep it up. Oh. Thank you, Bob. It's been strange. It really has. It really, really has. Stuart in Tampa. Hi, Stuart. Gary McHenry standing by with a WFLA Oldsmar Bridge report. Hurry, Oldsmar Bridge still. Moving along. Ah, okay. Heart the Herald Angels sing. We had a uh, few problems in... Non Oldsmar traffic. We have uh, a couple of accidents being cleared up. I'm telling you, call and s- Oh, God. We're- uh, Ted should, Webb is. Should. I really I moons are hell. I, I oh, my God, man. It, it's. It, I'm telling you, you know, unless it's the Oldsmar Bridge, they just are not responding. And on top of that, all afternoon, the mm-hmm. phones have been funky. Oh, I, you know, four calls in the middle just <laughs> go off. Uh, and uh, <laughs> well, that's that for Norton or phone company. That I mean, if they're not going to give you hazardous duty pay for this afternoon, just call in sick. Well, I'm going to go downstairs and talk to Handy and see if uh, Peter will give me hazardous duty pay. Or just call in sick. Going to have a good one tonight, too, so I hope that they respond. Yeah, what's that? People in St. Pete are upset. You know, they wanted to have the People recall People in St. Election. Pete are always upset. You know, well, the call was not big enough. The call was not big enough. Same well, thing every day in St. Petersburg. This time they have a legitimate beef, those that are opposed to the building of the stadium. And as you know, they have found carcinogenics on the premises. And it's going to cost $3.5 million to clean it up. Now, some of the politicians are saying, we'll take it out of the city budget. Now, Bobby, come on. You know that St. Pete needs a hell of a lot more done with their city budget than to spend it trying to clean up a place that is doomed to begin with. Exactly. Those green benches have to be replaced. They have to be. And besides that, you know, we're talking about building the biggest bingo hall in history. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the Contamidome in St. Petersburg. Well, I think it'll probably play well. I hope so. If not, we try to figure out somebody to tie it in with the Oldsmar Bridge, and you got it made in the shade. We'll try. I've been working on that this afternoon. Okay. There's an angle. 